In this video, I'm going to show you how we installed a full heating system on a high-end renovation, under for heating throughout, air source heat pump and hot water cylinder. We're not just installing a heating system, we are building efficiency into the fabric of the building. And the thing is, super efficient installs are way simpler than people think. It's about getting the basics right, knowing what to leave out and not overcomplicating it. Enjoy the video. We are at the stage on this job where we're installing underfloor heating to the ground floor. We'll come back to the upstairs and this is 160 square meters of underfloor heating that we'll get later screeded. And we're going 100 centers, 150 centers, 200 centers and 250 centers, depending on what's, what's required in terms of output just to match the heat loss at our flow temperature. The plant room will go in this little niche here, that's where the cylinder will go. We've got our uh, manifolds on the wall, we've got two six port manifolds, so 12 ports for 160 square meters. Here you can see I've run my MLCP under the insulation, those are primers going to the outside, right there to the heat pump, where, where the heat pump will go. Uh, this MLCP here, connected to copper now, goes to another manifold. This manifold doesn't need connecting yet, in the future there'll be a T connected to this manifold going from the, to the main flow and return. And the other manifold is right here. We don't get anyone to design our systems, so we literally design them ourselves. We've got pipe spacing and we just mark it on the plants, spray the areas that we're gonna cover. So we know 100 centers, 10 square meters, 150 centers, 15 square meters, 200 centers, 20 square meters, and so on. So don't really need anyone to draw that out for you. I mean, but it's nice to leave the drawing, a drawing for customers, which we haven't been doing really because you have no one to draw it. Uh, hopefully our, our Spruce software will be able to do that soon. So we'll be able to provide the whole package ourselves. One manifold done, so half of the job is done. And now we've got, well, one more to go, but it's half past three, so we'll just get it started. Marie is teaching Laron how to lay pipework. They've just finishing last loop on the second manifold and I am ready to pressure test the first manifold. Phase one of our installation is now completed. Underfloor heating on the ground floor is done. Once they are ready on the top floor, which is gonna take a bit longer, we'll come back to do underfloor heating on the top floor as well. Uh, the side plumbers are doing uh, all the hot and cold water pipe work. You probably can see they already run some PEX going to the kitchen. They'll do the bathrooms as well. Uh, all we ask them to do is to run main supply, hot and secondary return hot, the heat pump we are installing is 10 kilowatts and this is 32 mil MLCP pre-insulated pipe work. Uh, you might think it's too small for 10 kilowatts because this is around 2000 liters per hour flow. Uh, it's not because the run of the pipe work is only two meters with two elbows. So we can afford a slightly smaller size here. We're not gonna have, an, have a buffer on a 10 kilowatt uh, unit. We're gonna run all what's called direct. So circulator in the outside unit will pump through this flow to the diverter valve and that diverter valve will just go to this manifold and through that pipe work again that pipe work is 28 mil copper going to 32 mil pre-insulated MLCP going under the insulation to the other manifold and upstairs manifold again we've got pipe work in the ceiling not insulated again 32 mil MLCP goes in the ceiling goes across there and to a landing upstairs and it just sticks through the floor right now. There is no manifold there yet. So we haven't been here for, for about two months and we missed a major part of the video. We were just too busy to record it. So we installed the heat pump, we installed the plant room so the builders have under for heating on the ground floor screeded and it's all running. And what's not connected is temperature pressure relief so that for the side plumbers to run the pipes for us, for our discharge. And obviously their side plumbers will have to reconnect their hot and cold going to the kitchen 
And upstairs, this is where the work's happening today. So we are installing overlay panels at 20 mil thickness, overall thickness of 21. Uh, that will take 16 millimeters pipe work. Those are our transition panels, just polystyrene, so we can put loads of pipes where the manifold is going. The towel rails are also on manifolds and also have backup heaters. So let's, let me show you what Rishu is doing here. He's just about to connect our tower rails. How we install those panels? We put them down, then we use large, large washers. You can buy them in tile shops and 38 mil drywall screws to fix them down. So there's 18 mil ply, 21 mil panels. So we know those screws are not penetrating the subfloor. So the only difference for the bathrooms is because those panels can be tiled directly on top of the panels but they should be glued down on flexible tile adhesive. So that's what we've done here. Flexible tile adhesive on the panels and then also washers and screws. You can see the tower rail here, one of the tower rails, there's three bathrooms and that pipe work from that tower rail goes all the way back to the manifold. I'm actually thinking that it might be not, not such a terrible idea because everything runs at the same temperature to have the under for heating go to the tower rail, through the tower rail, and then back to under for heating. That probably would work fine as well. However, they do have direct electric elements on them. So if they are using those direct electric elements, it's nice to be able to isolate that tower rail without isolating the under for heating. So they are on separate uh, loops. Pipe works down. I wasn't here for it. Marie did that with Richard. And the screening guys are here. They're about to put latex over it. And we are just worried. They only have a ton of latex that should cover around 100 meters max, maybe 90. We may be a bit short, so we're trying to decide if we have to block off one or two rooms and come back and do it by hand without using the big machine, mixing machine they have. So we're going to measure it to see what it actually square meterage is because we only know the square meterage of the plants and when we ordered the panels of the plants we ended up with three boxes too many so maybe this is smaller than on the plants let's hope so so they they, they didn't build it 10 10 percent smaller it's maybe the partitions walls are slightly wider and also there is a big stairwell that takes some space out and maybe there's a little bit of discrepancy of me scaling from the plants does happen but luckily it's only it's only only it's 93 meters not 104 meters as I thought we should be fine so this setup has been now running for probably a month and we just fully commissioned it the job is finished but it's still as you can see a building site and it will be a building site before the uh, new owners move in for probably another two months I would imagine looking at progress of works uh, I'm not saying the builders slow I'm just saying there's still loads to do so what I'm gonna do now because the setup is running I need to protect the controller protect the documents so we put those nice plastic folders Amazon we bought on Amazon so we're gonna just cover it up so decorators or builders do not get it destroyed. I always try to get the plant rooms as neat as possible, but I must say when we work on building sites, especially when we have to connect to pipes done the, by the site plumbers, so they, they're thinking it's probably different to ours, I struggle to make them neat. Uh, it's, it's, it's a much bigger struggle than doing a retrofit or doing a full job on your own. So, you know, you end up with things like those pipes here or they leave you pipes on the se separate corner. So, yes, that's my excuse for saying this looks OK, but it could look neater. <laughs> First self-leveling has been done and, and it's cured. We had to fix some corners, uh, so remove expanding foam and put more self-leveling compound around the walls and tile adhesive so they can put grippers for carpets. And here you can see uh, the main manifold and you can see the system is running because there's flow going through uh, most of the loops apart for three bathrooms. This one, this one and this one because we've turned them off because they are being tiled. And another separate manifold right there for towel rails. So apart for this renewable technology here, 
our heat pump, they've also installed uh, solar, beautiful inset panels on the roof. One interesting thing they did is they have hot water here. It's really nice to wash your hands, especially if you're on a you know, building site and the cylinder's running. And this is probably the setup that every single renovation should be getting these days. Air source heat pump, solar panels, battery storage, which will cut your running cost by a large margin, or maybe even you might have a, a house that runs heating and hot water free of charge, pretty much, as summer generation quite often will balance out your uh, winter uh, heating on, on a heat pump. And when it comes to installation cost on renovations, it's no longer more expensive than gas because you have to put a new heating system. Anyway, there's no VAT on any of the works, no VAT on radiators, pipe or counter for heating, so that's already 20% cheaper. There are obviously grants towards units, seven and a half thousand pounds. There are grants from your banks as well. Uh, you can get 2,000 pounds from your bank towards the installation, so that's already, already nine and a half thousand pounds. And on an installation of, of this size, the VAT is going to be quite a few thousand pounds as well. Not to mention that boiler prices are going up as well, partially thanks to clean market mechanism. We'll see how that's gonna work out. If you are planning a renovation of your property, I think you should really consider renewables, solar panels, battery storage, and heat pumps as one ecosystem, and probably try to avoid gas. There's just one obstacle, finding the right person to do the job. If you can find an installer that you can trust to design and install a system with heat pumps, well, there's no reason to go with gas anymore. I'm really curious about your opinions about installing renewables in renovated properties. Leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video.